a lot of what I wrote about uh, in this mastermind was how I've reached these points of just sheer confusion about how I functioned as a person up until now, especially in the mornings, waking up just completely uh, unsure how I functioned the day before, such that I don't know what I'm going to do today to do, get even the same results. Yeah, stress is definitely the biggest effector in my life. So anything that affects that is worth considering, I think. ADHD Rewired, episode 335. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mentioned on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. It's been a while since we've had a mastermind session and we are here with our admin from ARC20. Our admin, we spell with two Ds. I'll let you think about that for a moment. And ARC20, ADHD rewired coaching, which is ARC. Some people aren't, they're like, what's this ARC thing I hear people talking about? So we have Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Saying hello works better than nodding on podcasts, typically. Hi, Eric. <laughs> and we have Natalie. Odie. <laughs> and we have Erica. Hello. And in the hot seat today, we have Blake. Hello. All right. So, Blake, I'm just going to ask for you to uh, kind of dive right in. And I just want to share for our listeners who might be new. Um, what we do, One of the things that we do in our coaching groups is each person has basically half an hour to bring an issue to the group and everyone is going to help them with the group. We also ask um, our, our members to fill out this whole form, this, this uh, packet that basically gives us a background of that. Since you as a listener don't have that piece of paper in hand, we do. Um, I'm going to let Blake kind of give us uh, an overview of what he had put in his mastermind worksheet um, as all of us are going to be uh, trying to help uh, Blake, with an issue that I think a lot of us can relate to, an issue that um, well, Blake is just referring to his morning impotence. So Blake, with that, why don't you uh, kick us off? Thank you, Eric. Yes, uh, I would have to say that my mastermind is heavily focused on this hope of you all being able to contribute to breaking the cycle that perpetuates my morning impotence. It is, as I've heard some people call ADHD. I can't actually say it myself. Jeez, I feel weird. But uh, the erectile dysfunction of, uh, of psychology because you can't consistently get it up. That thing. I think I just forgot. Maybe I just wanted you to say it. I'm not sure. But I think that the overview of this is probably best explained as the issue that I want to do um, and kind of the hopes that I have in, in trying to bring it with you guys and talk about it as well as general feelings and kind of what I've tried to do so far. And then hopefully we can talk about the benefits, what I'm actually willing to do and not willing to do. I'm pretty much willing to do a lot of things. But the reason why is... I'm struggling a lot in the mornings to just get myself going to start my day. It's honestly two, three hours before I'm alert enough or motivated enough to do anything. It's clear that I'll start work because I have a meeting and I'll show up. However, that's, I don't like that. I, I want more out of my mornings. I want more out of my day. It's not something that really sets me up for success. And it's often something that kind of drags me down. 
whenever my schedule flip flops around, when new things are introduced to it, we end the season of arc and everything is up in upheaval. This sort of thing just tanks my day. I'll spend the whole day unproductive. Um, and I mean, I think that I don't have to explain much about why that sucks, but <laughs> honestly, there's a lot of things that I care about. Um, that I really want to put my time into. I really see myself having the opportunity to support uh, my family and friends, um, to be a refuge to people, to continue to host people in our home, as well as to uh, bring justice to the communities around me. There's a lot of things that I hope to do, and they seem pretty lofty and ambitious for someone who can't get it up in the morning and get himself to work. So... I think probably the only other thing I would summarize is sort of the what it's looked like. Usually I wake up and immediately get food, coffee, meds into my body and then play video games or something. Most of the time video games, but something to do that is easy to do just to be doing something at all instead of just laying there staring at the ceiling. And this is mostly on the couch is the main floor of my house and sometimes I wake up way too early because I'm anxious and this starts at like 4 30 and doesn't really kick into full gear until 8 a.m so usually it's I mean it can be as long as that as long as almost four hours of just spinning up my uh I don't really know what I what resources I actually have. Spinning up my motivation doesn't seem to be there, but at least spinning up my urgency and anxiety that's definitely there. Okay, uh, I know that I have a couple questions for clarification. Um, I don't know if, if everyone else does as well. Um, if you do, just kind of unmute yourself and and jump in. Um, has this always been a, a pattern, though? As long as you can remember, I believe so. The mornings have always been significant in defining the relative pace of my day. Okay. Even when I was a kid. And uh, what about bedtime? Are you, uh, what time are you going to bed? I walk upstairs to start the activity of bedtime at 9.30 almost every night. That's been something That's I good. focused really hard on doing. But okay. it still varies. Now, what time are you turning the lights off? My sleep app says that I fall asleep at like, 10 30 ish okay all right um lights off usually like 10 30 ish but so maybe like 11 i don't i don't know i definitely have it set so that by 6 a.m i'm usually up and have had seven okay. and a half to eight hours of sleep any alcohol or uh marijuana use before bed no marijuana use um and no cbd I'm on too many meds. Uh, the days that I have had uh, drinks on the weekends, there's definitely a tipping point where one drink is kind of, uh, I can't really tell if it affects anything or not, but two to three is definitely like, it might, it might mess me up for the next day as far as being able to regulate my feelings. Are you using sleep cycle? Yep. No, I am using uh, Sleep for Android. Okay, I don't know if it, that this does this, but on uh, Sleep Cycle, they have a, a function called Notes, and you can it, you can create data points. So on mine, I have one where I, I actually says like, "Drink alcohol?" question mark And so like, and it sets it right before I set the alarm. So like, as I'm setting the alarm, before it actually starts the Sleep Cycle mode, it asks you these questions, right? And so you can see over time the things that correlate with uh with your sleep you know things like cool. yeah things like you know whether i meditated whether i journaled whether i exercised um whether i um spent too much time in the pantry in the evening gorging on carbohydrates um okay uh have you ever been tested for a sleep study no mm. i have not i do have some family history about sleep but okay not one not any sleep uh related studies for myself all right so when I'm hearing this, I would say if you did nothing else from this and get a sleep study, 
that would be like the the next course of action. Oh, that's true. I think the last time we talked, I was suffering from uh, Adderall induced insomnia, so sleep study was not super on my mind. But yeah, I've actually like switched over to to Concerta, and that's actually gone away. So anybody with ADHD, especially with the morning impotence, um, absolutely should get a sleep study to rule out sleep apnea or any other sleep disturbance because those things are treatable. Jessica. Yeah. So along the same lines of questioning, I'm glad you went there, Eric, because that's exactly where I was going. So to just expand on your bedtime routine, you say that you're heading upstairs at about 930. So what are you doing in that time? Like, what is your actual routine before bed? Yes. So at the simplest form, it is, I go upstairs, I take my meds, I brush my teeth. That takes all of 10 minutes. And then I'm usually just in bed waiting for my wife to finish getting ready. And many things have occupied that space. Sometimes I read. Sometimes uh, that's the one for a while. That was when I was trying, trying to fit in responding to messages from people on different apps. And uh, often... It's just a random period of time that could be conversation or just abuse of social media. Okay. Have you thought about trying to put your phone to bed at the same time that you start your nighttime routine and maybe doing some PM meditation instead? I like the idea of PM meditation. I like the idea of having a bed for your phone. Ooh. <laughs> I, yeah. Like when you said that, Jessica, I was just like, I just picture this cute little bed that you just kind of tuck in. And it's like, good night, phone. Seriously, you can actually <laughs> tuck your phone in. I have a friend who does that. She actually does tuck her phone. In. It's very cute. Um, so yeah, Blake. So going circling back around to this, and there's a, there's a couple other ideas. One, I can tell you that I've struggled with this a bit myself, particularly the waking up. Um, and the sleep study is there's definitely a great idea. But another thing that most people don't think about that has actually impacted me is actually blood sugar. So what's fascinating is if you're waking up at 3.30, 4.30 this time, what could be happening is you could actually be having reactive hypoglycemia and it feels like a panic attack. So I'm wondering... When are you feeling or when are you eating dinner and what is that dinner made out of? So during the weekdays, let's see, I'll give examples because it's highly variable. During the weekdays, my wife and I will cook like a protein and a vegetable, um, chicken or fish and asparagus, Brussels sprouts, something like that. Um, and we'll have that around 7.30. And that will kind of cap the night. There's, of course, many times when, like, there's a dessert or snack between then and bed, especially, like, leading into the weekends. Um, and then when that is not the case, when that routine isn't going on, it's usually uh, takeout, like, probably... Uh, exactly what you're talking about, like high carbohydrate focused foods. Okay. And so, that would be probably the same time, if not later. Okay. So your, your timing seems pretty good. Um, I would say, see if you can start logging, like if you keep a notebook by your bed or, or something like that, see if you can start logging dinner and when you're waking up with this anxiety and see if you can find a pattern. Um, you can also go get your blood sugar levels tested, but I can tell you it did not show up for me. And I spent probably a good six plus years thinking I was having terrible panic attacks and actually being diagnosed with anxiety when actually I had hypoglycemia. Um, and luckily my a current partner had a former roommate that was diabetic. So he recognized it in me. 
I told him, I'm sorry, I'm having a panic attack one time. I have to pull over. I was freaking out and frustrated. And he actually gave me some honey ham to eat. And within like five minutes, my quote unquote panic attack disappeared. It's just a thought. Hmm. No, that's definitely worth considering, especially since I've started to establish little bits of routine. I think I could handle tracking uh, more of like the type of dinner that I have. And if I've woken up in that night, especially since I use the sleep app, I guess I could take notes in that. There you go. And a weird quick tip, if that does wind up being it, just a small tablespoon of honey, which sounds totally counterintuitive, but a tiny tablespoon of honey before you go to bed can actually help stabilize your blood sugar through the night and prevent that awakening. So I actually talked to a doctor once uh, because I was telling him about my, my um, graham cracker habit. Um, And and I was trying to cut that out before bed. And he's like, you know, maybe you actually need that before bed. Um, so that was, I was like, oh, doctor's orders. All right. I'm keeping it up. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a good, it's good to experiment. Cause I know when, when I wake up in the morning and I, if I didn't eat something right before bed, like I don't feel good. All right, Erica. It's true. Yeah. Um, so like, I just want to make sure I've got this in my mind. So how many times a week are you waking up early in that sort of state where you're, you're laying there, you, you can't, you don't feel like getting up, you don't have any motivation, but you can't go back to sleep because now the anxiety is there. So how many times a week is that actually happening? Do you think? I can usually correlate it with deadlines that work and changes in routine and I've seen I've seen that be consistent through the last few months. So it'll be a couple of nights leading into the week where I have a deadline. Um, and my my work kind of does chunks of work in periods of two weeks. So um, a few times a month. Uh, and then also, I was expecting it when arc was going to end. I was like, I'm going to have all these open blocks with nothing planned. And I don't know what that's going to do to me. And over the weekend, it was definitely just like weird uh, trying to go to sleep Sunday night, knowing that Monday I didn't have anything actually do. But I'm so used to having a whole bunch of stuff that I need to prepare for ARC. Uh, I actually had a lot of weird dreams. Uh, And Monday was actually the night this week that I woke up at like 4.30. So sometimes you're wait is is this correct? That makes sense. Sometimes you're waking up at four and then the anxiety kicks in, but other times you're getting your full amount of sleep, but you're still dragging. Is that correct? Yes. Like it's okay. Really so <laughs> so sometimes it's like so extreme. You're just like ter- it's really bad. But then sometimes it's just sort of you're just dragging, even if you've gotten the eight hours. You just can't seem to get motivated. It's not, it's not happening. Okay. Sometimes I even have to have a nap at four or five mm-hmm. and I'll rack up like 10 hours in a day of, of registered sleep. You see a nap at four or 5 PM. Yes. That is probably too late for a nap, my friend. Cause you need, I think I think what's the word sleep pressure or sleep is like, it's a, it's a force that builds up that it's at its lowest upon waking up typically. Right. And then as you go throughout the day, um, it, it builds and builds and builds until you have that feeling like you're falling asleep. Right. Um, mm. a nap at like four, five, it, like you be lucky to fall asleep by like midnight. Like if you're lucky. Right. Um, so like, they, they suggest that you should have at least at, at very least eight hours in between a, a short nap, right? And your actual bedtime. And when I say short nap, I mean like half an hour. Like Quick note. A, yeah. What you're talking about, it's um it's actually called adenosine. And caffeine actually blocks the adenosine receptors in your brain. That's what builds up sleep pressure. Sleep pressure. So that's so yeah. So Eric's a hundred percent correct. That sleep pressure is really important. So if you are taking naps later, that could also be what's waking you up. Good, good, good note. 
Well, okay, so this is actually an interesting segue because I didn't actually consider it when writing this mastermind because my caffeine habits have changed a lot over the last several months. Uh, but up until this week have been increasing. Um, but this problem was going on uh, before. However, I also have been taking for almost a year now a um, cortisol sort of supplemental health thing uh, that was recommended to me by my psychiatrist to promote like better stress health. Um, and one of the things that I found really fascinating about uh, the spark books on exercise was how it talked about too much cortisol can affect your hippocampus and memory. And um, a lot of what I wrote about uh, in this mastermind was how I've reached these points of just sheer confusion about how I functioned as a person up until now, especially in the mornings, waking up just completely uh, unsure how I functioned the day before such that I don't know what I'm going to do today to do, get even the same results. Um, yeah, stress is definitely the biggest effector in my life. So anything that affects that is worth considering, I think. Do you guys have any opinions, thoughts? Um, all I know is speaking about stress, the fact that my phone just rang gave me stress. And then um, I'm going to just use this as a segue so you can actually tell me what you just said, because my brain was thinking about the fact that my phone just rang. So my apologies, but we will be <laughs> right back. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from the ADHD Rewired coaching community, which includes our coaching and accountability groups and our alumni membership community. I definitely would describe the group as a mirror of myself reflected back at me so many times that I can no longer deny who I am. I decided to join the group because early this year, I decided to take my ADHD more seriously. And rather than sort of pushing away the things that I didn't like, about the impact it had on me. I felt like I should learn more structure about how to deal with it and work through those things. The ongoing community was a big part of the reason I wanted to sign up because I didn't want something temporary. I wanted something that supports me for longer than that. I still feel like I'm still so at the beginning. I did the 10 week intensive that now dumps me into the rest of the community. So I feel like the group is just the beginning and I'm excited that I don't have to leave and that I get to keep my friends. I find out that there's more to this this ADHD thing than I know, and it's impacting my life. I tried podcasts and I tried books and audiobooks, and none of those work. And I didn't even really want to try this. My wife suggested it, and she told me that just give it a shot. And let me tell you, knowing that all the shame I felt for all those years about being the way that I am, and then finding out that not just intellectually, other people share them, but how universal it is and how easy. It can be to forgive yourself and move forward. I accepted my ADHD probably in the first question and answer thing we filled out, but I didn't know what accepting my ADHD meant then. And I, I feel like I am far more happy that I have it in my life and I would call it acceptance. And I really, really appreciate each and every one of you amazing people. I'm standing in solidarity because I too am here because my wife thought it was a good idea and I'm glad she did it. I've known I've had ADD for a while and I've done some reading and I've tried some stuff and I felt like I had accomplished as much as I was going to accomplish and taking this course, I found out that I was wrong and that I am still capable of growth. And the other thing I discovered was how much I missed having connection with other people who get it. Whether you're brand new to the podcast and you're learning about these groups for the very first time, or you've been thinking about joining these groups for a long time, go to coachingrewired.com and add your name to our registration invitation list. The registration kickoff event for ADHD Rewired's 22nd season of coaching and accountability groups is just two weeks away. Have you joined the list so you get your invitation? When you go to coachingrewired.com, click on the black button to add your name to our interest list for our fall coaching groups. I can't wait to meet you and see where these coaching groups will take you. 
One of the things that I thought was super cool about getting included in the alumni community stuff was going to different things, study hall or the Tuesday planning sessions and seeing people who had their group number in their name and they were group nine or group 15. And it's like people stay and they've been here for a long time and they still find it valuable. And when you're on group 30 and 75, I'm proud of my ARC 20 because people can look at my ARC 20 and know that that this stuff is for real and people stick around. And remember, after 10 weeks, you don't have to be on your own. Members stay connected and engaged in our coaching community with weekly sessions that I lead, adult study halls where you can work with others on Zoom, meditation classes, and a number of other peer-led interest groups. Our registration kickoff event is on September 3rd at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. And registration is by invitation only. Get your invitation. Go to coachingrewired.com and click on the black button. That's coachingrewired.com. All right, we are back. I got... uh caught up with my brain wandered there um hopefully my phone won't ring again but i didn't actually fix anything but i didn't realize it was broken so all right blake so uh you're talking about cortisol and caffeine um here's a weird question for you your armpits sweat a lot <laughs> for those who can't see the camera i'm raising my arms because trying to air and feel i don't think so <laughs> I generally sweat profusely when there's any amount of heat. It's okay. never really localized. Okay. Okay. How's your exercise? It's been really good recently over the last two to three weeks. Okay. What are you doing um, for? I'm starting to hit that. Like I passed the three times a week, 30 minutes. I'm getting into the five times a week, 30 minutes. What, do you, um, what are you doing in those 30 minutes? I am briskly walking. I'm trying to hit a heart rate goal, I'm trying to keep my heart rate at between like 126 and 132, something okay. like that. During that workout, is there any time we were getting your heart rate up to like 150 to 160? I don't think so. I would encourage you to try even for like a minute or two. Just get it up to that point. There's, okay. it's, it's like a rainbow explosion inside of your brain. When you do that, it's, it's, it's sort of the birthplace of, of neurogenesis where all these new neurons are created uh, for, for new connections. When you, when you do this thing that feels like the burn for like a minute or two, um, it has a really powerful brain boosting effect. Okay. Yeah. I took out sprinting to increase time, but there's some nice green parts of my walk when I would love to just playfully run i think you should skip like skip you should you should skip are we going for like forward distance or like height <laughs> <laughs> go, go for the, go for a combination between the two natalie okay so um uh everything you're talking about distinctly reminds me of myself a few years ago um it would take me hours to get out of bed um and I have tons of alarms and I got a sunrise alarm clock and like I would have to get out of bed to turn the alarm off. Um, and then I would still go back to bed and go back to sleep after standing up and walking to the alarm clock and turning it off. And uh, yeah, and it would just take me hours in the morning to wake up. And um, my, my doctor was like, well, and you take these meds like, you wake up enough to turn things off and to stand up and walk around and then you go back to bed. Put your put your Adderall next to your bed. Have a, an alarm go off 45-ish minutes before you want to get out of bed. Take your meds, go back to sleep. And I I did that and it helped a lot, a lot. It didn't help all the time. But like a lot of the time, it really helped. Um, so that's something to to consider. I also used to, I had a caffeine addiction in high school before I was diagnosed or anything and literally would fall asleep in class like 
every class unless I drink coffee, um, which is a total, like, I guess that's a total inattentive symptom of ADHD, where if you're like trying to focus on something, but it's a little too boring, you'll like focus in on it enough to fall asleep. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for describing so, like every college class I took. Very literally, I, but I would fall asleep in like my college classes too. All of my classes, I fell asleep somehow still got A's. I don't know. But like, it's, it's a total thing that happens and it's, it's like an alertness level thing. Right. And so if we can't get to a certain level of alertness for hours, it can just like go on where we're like weird zombies. And if it's like hours, then we get paranoid that we're not getting alert enough. And then we get too alert then we trigger these like panic attacks, which also exhaust us and make us more tired. Right. It's a terrible cycle. And then right around um, the time when it's time to get ready for bed is when your brain turns on and it's ready to, you're ready to focus. It's like, right, we're good now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just a thing. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And I wish I could tell you what exactly I did that that's not happening to me anymore, but I don't know. I, I, nothing has changed. I like my sleep is the same as it used to be like, every, and it's not happening to me anymore. I don't even need to take, like, I don't even need to take my meds 45 minutes before I wake up. But like, it, it is, it's a thing. And I just wanted to relate to you, I guess. So. <laughs> I've just heard. A big part of, of um, I mean, I used to have the same issue. Like I would, I would literally drink a pot of coffee in the morning, like a, like a literal pot. And I made my, I made my shit strong. Like it was, I, it, it was like questionable if we just call it mud. Like it was like, you know, for like eight cu water cups, it was like nine heaping scoopfuls of, of coffee. Yeah. Um, and I would then fall asleep on the couch and what it was, it was, it was what I was eating for breakfast and what I was eating for breakfast. I thought it was healthy. I actually refer, I called it bird food because it was like this, like super, like not sweet, like semi gross, but also kind of good, um, uh, cereal, you know, pour kefir over it and cut up berries. Right. Like wasn't frosted flakes. Wasn't lucky charms. Like I, I let go of my cookie crisp. Right. You know? Um, and I, and I, and I was, when I first started learning about the role of carbohydrates, um, specifically on the ADHD brain, I'm like, well, let me try that because this whole, like, can't get my shit up in the morning, um, is really frustrating. Right. So I started making these protein shakes. Right. And it was absolutely more work than my bowl of cereal in the morning. And so for it, had, for me, if it's something is more effortful, the reward has to be big. And I is I started this 10 years ago, really shifting my focus to high uh, high protein, low carbohydrate uh, in the morning. I actually made for about seven years, I made like the same protein shake every single morning. Right. I finally got bored of it. So I, I have a couple of things that I mix, uh, mix into it, um, that, are, that I rotate now. Now I'm on a, a high protein oatmeal binge. Um, but it made such a big difference, like that. If, uh, you really may want to consider, like, save the carbs for nighttime. Now that you say all of that, I used to eat a protein bar for breakfast, but that's all I would eat a protein bar and an apple. And it was only eight or to 10 grams of protein. And that's what I would eat when I was driving into like work 40 in the carbs, morning. Probably. And now, and um, now I make sure to eat at least twenty of protein every morning. And I that could totally be it. That could totally be why. And I just changed it like a while ago to try and do this diet, and it never correlated to me that might that might be why I'm not groggy in the morning. Right. Like I'm not like one of these people who are like, you have to change the diet. Like I'm, I think like, all things experiment. And like, if you feel really good with the change, then like, I probably don't need to tell you to keep doing it. Right. Like you'll, you'll figure that out for yourself. Right. If you feel no change, it's a pain in the butt. Like go back to what you were doing before. Right. Jessica. Yeah. So 
I'm so glad that this conversation's gone down here because honestly, Blake, like when I was initially reading your mastermind, I didn't even think about this. Um, so this book, first of all, like Which Natalie, book? Eric, Blake, I'll mention the book. Don't worry. <laughs> I had all of those same experiences, carbs in the morning, massive caffeine addiction. I think at my worst, I was probably having two to three Red Bulls a day and like in the evening, because I did shift work. So I had a lot of sleep issues and stuff like that to get over. So this book, the book being, um, it's called The Power of When. It's by Michael Bruce. He is a sleep doctor. This book is like the Bible for experimentation. You know, as Eric was saying, instead of like doing a bunch of things or changing your whole diet, he literally has this broken down by chronotype. So instead of just, you know, larks and the night owls, he's got, got it broken down into four separate types. And he has suggested routines for each type and it covers everything. And just in case you don't know what chronotype is, it's just that they, if you have the tendency to be more of a night owl or a morning person, like, so people are biologically kind of wired. Uh, so this theory uh, uh, says uh, for your chronotype. Yes. Yeah. And this book, I mean, it literally changed my life. It doesn't just tell you, about, you know, specific foods to eat. It tells you specifically when to eat. It tells you when to write a book, when to get surgery, like everything based on how your rhythms go. And so there's so many different things that you could just try one thing at a time. And it would be a good, good resource for anyone, especially people with ADHD. Erica? Hey, Blake, do you ever feel this way when you've gotten your full you know, you've gotten eight hours. Do you still feel not great in the morning? Do you still feel not great all day? Do you, are you still kind of in that, in that fog? It sounds like your 930 meeting sort of galvanizes you. There's probably a, an adrenaline rush. Like I got to get ready for it. But I mean, do you ever have the full night's sleep and, and you're still feeling this way? Are you feeling this way every day is kind of what I'm asking. To a degree. Yeah. That's, that's definitely why I wanted to mastermind it is because it's there is that very ingrained process. My body expects food, coffee, meds, and like video games, like stimulation that is not at all like any expectation. And then I'm like alert and can actually hold a conversation. How long do you play video games for in the morning? That is a wonderful question that I've been talking with my therapist about. So, uh, it used to be a lot. Let's see. I think March, it was two, like two and a half hours in the morning. A lot. And then, um, Recently, it's dropped down to about an hour. Okay. Um, do you want me to use a gentle approach or do you want me to take the gloves off? I'll take the gloves off, throw them down. You were gentle last year. Let's do this. Um, okay. So you are um, consuming instead of generating output. Okay. One to two hours of consuming that is not like, yes, you enjoy the stuff, the games, right? Like you're a big gamer. It's part of like who you are, who you are. Is it, it's stimulating your brain. So you're maybe feeling that like, oh, this is good. It's waking me up because it's stimulating. It's also like eating Jolly Ranchers when you're hungry. Right? Like if there's nothing else there, I guess it'll do, right? But like probably not the best choice, right? When I first read this, uh, Blake, and, when, and you, because I, I know that you, you do this in the morning. Um, and I think my first thought when I heard you that you do this, I was like, really, Blake? Video games in the morning? Like every morning? 
like I get if you're doing like five or ten minutes of like oh what's this what's that game my son plays now uh uh geometry something um it's a it it's you guys know what I'm talking about geometry dash just pisses is that me one out. of those like platformer games on the Xbox or just like it's, a, it's, an, it's an iPad right game now? and it's like okay shit pisses me off it's so hard um <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i mean it's like uh, one of the things you said in your master in your, in your worksheet that i actually like is that, that you said you're not willing to cut out video games and tv without a plan okay let's focus on that part be without a plan because video Ooh, games that has some history i got some solid fun history for you okay yeah all right so when I started on meds for ADHD, before I actually accepted that I had ADHD, yes, that was a thing. Um, I realized, oh man, caffeine's like has a big effect. So one Lenten season, I went off caffeine for those full 40 days. And I ended up replacing my mornings with video games. And since then, <laughs> I've had a pattern of video games in the morning. Uh, it also came at a time when I didn't have a smartphone. Um, I was trying to not have a smartphone. I had a dumb phone. So video games, extra ingrained. So why were you late to the smartphone party? Oh, man, that's a story in itself. I wasn't late to it. I am a technologist. I can't help but being... It was intentional, wasn't it? It was intentional. Why? It was very intentional. Why? Um, because I was trying to overcome a pornography addiction where the phone just like, it's just a ubiquitous gateway that I know how to get around like everything. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I, oh, you're welcome. So to me, I'm wondering if you've replaced a pornography addiction with the video game addiction. Yes, that's what I think is 100% true. And that's the history is like, I tried to cut back this last Lenten season, video games. I did not see the same results I did with coffee. It was so hard. And it's kind of been that and work that have replaced my previous addictions, or at least supplemented. I have some ideas. We got to take a really quick break. When we come back, um, the, like the gloves are off. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by our patrons over at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. We have a recent record number of patrons who have joined our cause to support these podcasts. Five new patrons have joined us since last week, and I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. Welcome to Amar P at the $5 a month level. Tim B, Mimi S, and Aoife M at the $10 a month level, and Beth B at the $25 a month level. I just want you to know how much I appreciate your support. Consider giving by going to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon, or just click the Patreon button that is at the top of the page. If you are able to support this podcast, I sincerely thank you. For those of you who have been giving at the $25 a month level, where you can join us for our monthly coaching call for patrons, our next group coaching call is Tuesday, August 25th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Our group coaching calls for patrons who give at $25 a month or more are every fourth Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you are not able to support this podcast financially, but you do want to support this podcast, please consider leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast player like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. All of your support is appreciated. To become a patron, go to ADHDrewired.com, click on that Patreon tab at the top of the page, or you can just go directly to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. That's ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. And thanks. If you are new to this podcast, did you know that we have two other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network? Check out Hacking Your ADHD with Will Curb every Monday. 
Will's last episode focused on energy management. This week, he is focusing on emotional energy. Join Will as he explores ways that you can work with your ADHD brain to do more of the things that you want to do. Subscribe to these short, mindful ways to hack your ADHD. It might be the best 15 minutes you spend all week. Go to hackingyouradhd.com for show notes and to subscribe. And every Friday, check out ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan. ADHD Essentials is kind of like this podcast, but with a focus on families, parents, and educators. And if you are a parent who has a child with ADHD, Brendan runs an eight-week group focused on parents, Mondays and Wednesdays from September 21st to November 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern, and he has opened up registration. You can learn more about his groups at ADHDessentials.com slash parent groups. But our podcasts, Hacking Your ADHD and ADHD Essentials, are both part of the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Available to everyone, everywhere you consume podcasts. And don't forget, you can join me and the hosts of Hacking Your ADHD, Will Kerb, and the host of ADHD Essentials, Brenda Mahan, for an hour of live Q&A, September 8th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Listeners join us and ask all sorts of questions like, how do I prioritize? Or how can I tell the difference between ADHD and the lack of executive function and depression? Join us and ask a question. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash events, or just click the events button at the top of our homepage and register for this and all other upcoming live Q&As. We do this every second Tuesday of the month at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Join us for an hour of live Q&A. Register for free at ADHDrewired.com slash events. That's ADHD rewire.com slash events. We hope to see you at our next live Q&A Tuesday, September 8th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you there. All right. Like you, I think it's awesome that you have been increasing your exercise routine. This now needs to become your morning routine, right? And do it before your brain has a chance to convince you and rationalize why you don't want to do it this morning. Right? You, because what exercise will do is the same thing you're like trying to sort of and, and are sort of getting with the video games is stimulation. Right? But exercise does it better. Right? And it lasts longer. And your brain's going to feel better. And I, I mean, I always think about the benefit of exercise for our our brain, but our waistline benefits too. You tricked me. <laughs> I, I did. didn't realize that you you found my one thing that, that I had put somewhere else, and you're just like, it would be an even better one thing if you moved it over here. What? <laughs> so, what do you think? It hurts in a good way. Yeah. Is it like, uh, is it like the hurt when you're like, you tore your entire like, like room apart looking for your keys and then you discover that they were in your pocket the entire time? Like that kind of hurt? Or when you make the call, like, I can't find my phone anywhere and you're on your phone, like telling somebody that. Yeah. That sense of searching and searching and searching and then just being like, oh, I'm not going to tell anybody about this. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? Okay. So for the practical toolbox to apply this super amazing idea, where do you currently, do you leave the house to exercise or do you exercise in the house? I leave the house. Okay. So then if I may make a suggestion, right now, your brain has a loop. That loop is, I wake up, I eat food, I have coffee, I get meds, I play video games. All of this is happening on the couch before I go downstairs to the basement. So can you move your video game system away from your couch, put your running shoes or whatever you need on top of your couch the night before so that they are staring at you and take whatever you can to make your old loop an obstacle for you to complete and make the new loop that you want to complete 
easy for you to complete? Oh man, uh, this this is. I was just talking to my wife today. I was like, man, I think I want to move my desk upstairs because there's so much more natural light. Being in the basement sucks. If I switch the two, maybe not switch the two. That's that's a that's a two two step thing. That's putting my work stuff there as well. But moving the game system downstairs away from the natural light. And you know, along with that, Blake, maybe even some you know some signs or pictures or something you know above the couch that says what are you doing here it's 6 30 get outside you know those kinds of that external kind of um you know knock upside the head i also think it you know depending on if you can uh, meeting a friend uh you know like at 6 30 or whatever time um you know a commitment <clears throat> or a trainer or you go to a gym for a particular class or you do a crossfit or you know that sort of commitment that way too um would kind of get it going you know in the morning is that anything you could do yeah uh so i want to include people how do i do that so <laughs> so my occupational therapy brain is coming out right and I was going to say, you know, you know, stimulation and everything. So I was going to say the same thing about exercise in the morning. And then Eric got, got that punchline because he's Eric. But here's the other thing I know <laughs> about you is you have that, that exercise video game. Yes. Zombie Run? Do. No. No. Ring Fit. Which one? It's a uh, ring fit for the Nintendo Switch. It is built around what is essentially a Pilates ring. Hmm. So I think it's probably way better for you to go outside and do your walks like you do in the morning, right? But it's, it's you were talking about how you used to do the, the, the Switch um ring fit game a lot and then you weren't doing it as much and if you're trying to incorporate friends in like that's isn't it one of those games where you can have multiple friends play and it's an exercise game sorry about the beeping that was my timer that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't look at it at all um I, I think the friends thing is, is actually happening naturally. Uh, my wife did free, ring fit this morning and she looked at me and she's like, I'm almost twice your level. Catch up. <laughs> that's it. See, and that's why I'm like, see, there's, there's so many different things you can do with video games. It doesn't have to be, you know, what it is, you know, for you right now. And I think, you know, there's a lot of benefits to going outside. Like it's, there's a sensory change, like with temperature, there's sunlight, there's actively moving forward, not staying sedentary in one space. Like there's a lot of very important and good things for doing walks in the morning, especially f like for, for ADHD brains um, who are groggy because it's a whole sensory experience that'll wake your body up, right? So I'm not saying replace to, to do the ring fit in the morning, like uh, rather than walk in the morning. But if you want to like go for a 15 minute walk and then do ring fit for 20 to 30 minutes in the morning, like that's probably going to reward you in a lot of ways, as long as it doesn't make it too easy for you to sit back down on the couch and play. That was my one concern. My second concern is instead of look, doing it like splitting time, look at it as, as plan B, like when it's raining, you can't get outside. That's the other thing I was going to say too. <laughs> if it's raining or if it's snowing in the winter, like you can do the ring fit. Yeah. You know, when, uh, when we were sort of in the, if you think of, of COVID and I couldn't go to the gym and I couldn't play pickleball, um, you know, I started uh, basically playing pickleball in my office against the wall. Like it was not very fun, but like it, I did it until I got a sweat going. Um, like there were times I just turn on some music and dance like a fool, right? Like the whole goal is just to get your heart rate up. And and what I found for, for me is that especially when like, cause my routine changed and I was like, oh shit. Like I went like three or four weeks without exercising and it like, I was like in a really bad spot during 
uh, during that time. So I realized that like, I need to have like, not just a plan, but a plan B and a plan C. Like, cause if I have, like, if I'm in the moment where I have to start the thing and then the thing that I was like anticipating starting becomes not an option, like my brain kind of freezes. Right. So I wanted to know like, all right, if you know, this space is not available, I'm going to do this instead and just have it predetermined ready to go. And it's, um, cause if you, we want to make the, especially if, if, you know, we're talking about low levels of arousal, we're talking about low levels of activation, um, around kind of inattentive, uh, symptoms of ADHD. So we want to make things as basically easy as fuck, right? Like make them super easy to initiate. If that means you go to bed wearing your workout clothes, like do that. All right. All right. We are at about the 50 minute mark here. So, um, and I think we covered a lot of ground here, Blake. How, how are you feeling? I feel pretty good with how we've collectively identified some, probably one of the most significant components, even though I wrote so much, uh, I wrote about a lot of other things. There's definitely a, if my healthy baseline isn't solid, it just isn't going to matter how I try to organize myself. Um, and I'm glad you guys were able to see like, Blake, are you sure you're doing okay? You say you're getting enough sleep. Yeah. It's, and I really, really want to encourage you if you could this week make an appointment for a sleep study. I forgot about that. Let me write that down. It's super easy, right? Like sleep studies are easier than ever. They give you a machine. You take it home to your bed. Oh, really? Where, you do that now? Yeah. 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 My, my, boyfriend had a sleep study done six months ago and this this is how we did it we went we picked the machine up they show you how to use your machine you take it home it's like a small little thing you wear a thing on your finger and just want a little nasal cannula and you place a little thing right here on your on your heart tiny thing with like a like a very long skinny string and it works super super well and it beeps at you and wakes you up if it falls off so (laughs) your wife's gonna love that but it it works it it works really well and then they give you all the things that you need to know and it's it's and then you bring in the machine in and you have to bring it in the next day or they'll charge you like over a thousand dollars that's part of it yeah you wow. like sign a thing being like yes i will return this machine to you tomorrow uh, so that's the only thing that's like, ah, about it, but it's like so much better than having to go to a weird random room to sleep, you know? So. All right. Uh, any other, uh, commitments, Blake, that you want to share here? Let's see. Um, I think other than the sleep study, there's two things that stand out, both trying to put my exercise into the beginning of my morning as well as changing my environment to really mess with my natural habit of sitting down on the couch um well one of those is uh both of those are doable and i think i can do them uh the one that i also find useful is trying to establish a high protein morning and like a minor carb evening. Um, that's, that's more of like a nebulous one that I don't know how I would do right now. Maybe that's the next step after I've power of when I know you showed me that book and I immediately bought it on Amazon. But have you read it yet? Or do you mean like you just now bought it on Amazon? Yeah. And you haven't like read it during, yet? No. That joke did not land. <laughs> awesome. All right. Blake, Jessica, Erica, Natalie, thank you so much. Uh, we will be back um, sometime soon with another mastermind. Thank you. 
This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find summaries and additional resources for each episode. You can apply to our free and secret Facebook community. You can learn more about ADHD Rewired's intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups and sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content you won't get anywhere else. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click the Patreon button. If you're a regular listener and you're still listening to my voice, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron through our Patreon page. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to listeners, but it is not free to produce. And patrons get really cool perks. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. You can also subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube. And you can subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube and see select interviews and some other videos. I've posted podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends and your family and your clients, as well as your coaches, therapists, and doctors. And if you're a coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader, and you would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at my website, ADHDrewired.com. And if you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this podcast. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. You know, you might be the person that turns somebody on to a podcast for the very first time. And if you really love this episode, please consider hitting share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I count on you to help me spread the message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and to help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, or any other podcast app that accepts ratings and reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe on this podcast on your podcast app so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Not sure where to start? In no particular order. Check out Atomic Habits by James Clear, The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk, 10% Happier, and Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. These are both by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions and Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Vaden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Do you have trouble asking for help? Listen to The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. It's one of the best produced audiobooks I've ever heard. If you're looking for something a little bit more, say, magical, I unexpectedly fell in love with the Harry Potter series. And I don't usually listen to those kinds of books. And I loved it. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus yet, check out Brene Brown's books, starting with The Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or a leader in any capacity, check out her 2018 book, Dare to Lead. And Brene still is my most wanted guest. So if you know Brene, you would be so kind to make that connection for me. I would be really, really grateful. You know who else I would like to have on the show? You. Click the podcast tab at ADHDrewired.com and then click the Be a Guest button at the top of that page and schedule a 15-minute pre-interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting. Self-care is not selfish, and no matter what gets done or doesn't get done, at the end of the day, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.